And we're back. Welcome back to VMworld Live. I'm John Troyer. We're here in Copenhagen. Very pleased to have with me for the next segment, Chad Sackett. Hey John, it's always good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Chad is a VP at EMC with the VMware Alliance. So Chad, uh, that, that, that intro makes me sound all hoity-toity, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a guy. Hey, we're all, it's all, it's Europe. We're a little more formal. Uh, yeah, I was wearing a tie yesterday. A tie, John? Yeah. People respect and, and listen to people on TV that are wearing ties. Ah, that's right, that's right. So, so I have no credibility. <laughs> zero, zero. No, Chad, thanks for coming it's in. It's my pleasure. Really, really great to see you again. Two VM worlds in a row. Yep. Um, how, how has it been, and, and what, what interesting things have you been working with? So uh, it's been a great event. Um, uh, you know, it's actually been very smooth. I know that uh, there was a lot of discussion about you know, the changing of the schedules of the VM worlds from the previous year's models to the way it's working now. Personally, uh, the feedback I'm getting from customers, and I can sp say for us for sure as a, as a partner, it's much it's much smoother. Uh, having the two having the two VM worlds having together. the two VM worlds right uh, next mm -hmm. to one another. Um, loads of great customer dialogue. Um, you know, loads of great sessions. The hands-on labs are operating flawlessly, which is which is great. Using the same approach that we used in uh, VM World San Fran. Um, and uh, uh, but I have to say, I'm I'm you know, it's been a lot of fun too, not just the work, <laughs> but that translates into, uh, uh, you know, third day, a little, a little dragon, but, but I've, I think, I think I've been doing six or seven sessions and I'm, I'm pretty, okay. pretty cooked. The best session though, which, which, um, at least for me, was the group meet the expert sessions okay. are, are really working. So. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, so we've taken, we've designated some people as knowledge experts, people you might want to talk to, and they've they've slotted out uh, individual 10 minute, 10 minute or 15 oh, minute it sessions. Long, it was more than that. It was about like I think a half an hour. Right, so that you can you can sign up, meet these guys. Right. You, they, they put you over in a corner and they and they sign people up and so to meet with you. The one on ones are great. Okay. Awesome, but there's also group ones. Oh, the group sessions, right. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know, the, we did a group one on on storage, and there was about I think 30 people in in that one little room. We but it's intimate, right? It's okay. not a it's not a breakout, and it's basically completely open. It's kind of a it's our version of Birds of a Feather this right. year, trying trying something new a little bit. And and uh, I have to say, midway through, I thought to myself, I hope someone is taping this ah. so that it gets posted on the internet, because the questions and the dialogue and the interaction were priceless. And I was thinking to myself, the moment that this is done. I'm running back to Palo Alto. I'm running back to Hopkinton. I'm going to force product managers to watch that video, <laughs> right? Because it's it's just great feedback directly from from uh, people who are VMware partners, from VMware customers about uh, what they're looking for. And the good news is, someone did tape it, and I am going to post it. Oh, awesome! Great, yeah. great. Yeah, we've often gone back and forth to, to having some sort of unconference or like you know more informal gathering mm -hmm. right ahead of VMworld. Maybe we'll try it next year because yeah, yeah. there's just so much energy. It's hard to capture. It, uh, totally, as you're totally, running around to sessions totally. and the general session and the solutions exchange here. So the one, the one other thing that to me was a, was a standout is today uh, we did a session on VM teleportation. Right? Okay. And uh, you know it's it, what was fascinating to me is I talked to two customers right afterwards. Stop for a second. VM teleportation. You want to give us right. a little bit of context? Okay. Thanks for the. Basically, it's the use case of vMotion over longer geographic distances. Kind of a stretch cluster. Stretch, so it can be used in multiple ways. You could vMotion between clusters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think about using it with stretched clusters and using vMHA as a disaster recovery mechanism. Okay. Right? My opinion, and it was in the session we talked about the technical reasons why, is I think that storage vendors, and I'll lump us in that equation, uh, that have options for geo dispersion of, of, of data. Uh, this is mostly uh, left hand NetApp and, and EMC, but okay. there but there may, you know others as well. And none of us in particular. Mm -hmm. We are doing customers a huge disservice. Oh. Because okay. although we can do it and it's a really neat POC and the customer goes, ooh, that's cool. Mm. I'd like to do that. Yeah, everybody wants to do that. Everybody it, wants yeah. to do that. The active active you know use case is very interesting. What they don't see is that basically VMHA was never designed in its current incarnation for this behavior. And the list of caveats that don't show up in a POC, but show up mm. in practice, is enormous. The use case that is more s solid today 
and believe me, we're working furiously with VMware to make that other use case more solid in future vSphere releases, um, is the vMotion between clusters. But vMotion between clusters, you can only vMotion today within the domain of a single vCenter. Right. Which means that what do you do with bringing a vCenter on the other side? There's solutions, but again, they're relatively complex. What if you want to use Site Recovery Manager? Site so Recovery Manager needs two vCenter instances. Right. So all of those solutions are mutually incompatible with a really good baked and adopted by thousands of customers DR solution. So, you know, I, I feel a big, long blog post coming on, John, because, because the number of customers, particularly here in Europe, that are looking to do this sort of thing, because they've got data centers that are closer, uh, more dark fiber, those mm, sorts of okay. things, it's it's a delicate so, topic. So you did the session, and there were and, and a lot of people were interested. Yep, yep. But and in the process of talking to them, you realized, wait a minute, you can't really recommend. You, can you recommend it for production? Well, Is it the kind so, of thing where you shouldn't really be doing it in production, or if you can yeah. do it, if you know what what's going on? So so uh, <laughs> the session was to was basically a directional session, right? Okay. Saying where Teachers. are we going di directionally, as well as what can we do today and being very explicit about the things you got to watch out for if you're doing it today, right? Okay. There's good KB articles, EMC and VMware have got one. You know, I know that there's one on, on metro cluster behavior. I'm sure that there's one for, for left-hand behavior. The thing is, though, that in general, people don't read the small print in the KB <laughs> articles, right? And the small print, if you read it, highlights that Man, oh man, there's a lot of things you got to watch out for. Now, again, we're working really what would hard. Some of the example, an example be? I'll give you, I'll give you one example. So, one thing that people generally don't do in the POC, so in the proof of concept type phase, they go, I'll cut the wire between the data centers and look, I can do VMHA and I'll restart on the other side. One thing that they don't do is they don't say, what happens if the storage loses its connectivity? Okay. But the VMware cluster can still see each other. Hmm, okay. And in these DR scenarios, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Right, sure. Right? Or conversely, what happens if the you know the VMware cluster is still going on, but the, or it loses its connectivity, and the storage resources uh, uh, are still connected? Then what they do is they basically disconnect it and then immediately reconnect it, right? But what happens in practice is you lose connectivity between a site, and data is being written for a long time, and then three days later you regain connectivity, and all of a sudden it's this this behavior of everything coming over. I'll give you one other, uh, two other examples. The next example is, okay, what happens if you have a cut between the the, the cluster? Well, it's VMHA is going to kick in, right? Well, VMHA depends on this little internal thing that no one knows about how it works with primaries and secondaries. How are you going to make sure that you have enough primaries on that side or that side? Well, you have to deploy the cluster in a specific sequence and you've got to have a given number of nodes in the cluster on this side or that side, which is four and four. What happens if you want to build a bigger cluster? What happens if you didn't do it the right way? What happens is the POC works, but in practice you run into a problem. And I'll give you one other thing. People then look at it and they go, hey, wait a second, with DRS in vSphere 4.1, there's these host affinity rules things. Right. Hey, that's cool. Maybe what we could do is say, these VMs belong on these, this side, these VMs belong on this side. Those govern initial VM placement. Right. They govern where they can vMotion, but they don't govern VMHA. Oh. Okay. So VMHA does not have any side the affinity rules, yeah. So, you know, Again, yeah, you, you, you've set up you set, you set up what you think are constraints uh, and conditions. And, and, but, and by the way, but, there, but they don't yeah, block. and there there's so many examples of this yeah. sort of thing, John, where the, it's it's not just the storage domain. Yeah. Just because something can be demoed, <laughs> and just because something works in a POC, doesn't mean yeah. you should do it. I think maybe that's the is that the, that's taken. Uh, maybe that's that. the blog post Ghost. title. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, anytime you get into a DR scenario. Um, you know, you know that it's a compli it's a compli there's a there's complicated uh, situation with, with lots of uh, rules and considerations, and you better do or have a run book and play through your play through your DR scenario, or else you don't know it's working yeah, in the first and, place. And, and you know that was that was in one of the meet the experts sessions, yeah. right? Um, uh, you know, when you do those, I obviously can't. I, it's not the right thing for me to be Chad the EMC guy, 
right? Uh, it's VMworld. It's, yeah. about, it's about VMware. And people come over with non-EMC storage questions. One guy came over and, you know, he was he, he was using Dell Ecologic and wanted to discuss iSCSI best practices. And, you know, my job is to help mm -hmm. him there, right? I had one customer come over and say, I'm looking at buying my first storage subsystems and I want to, I think I'm going to go the FAS NetApp route. Of course, there were many, many customers who came by and we're going the EMC <laughs> route, but whatever. So I'm talking to that guy and he goes, well, I'd like to do DR. But I don't think I should use SRM. I think I should just script the whole thing. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And and uh, that's been a common thread and common conversation. I've never encountered a customer ever who has maintained their script. And in the group session, someone said, "I think that you know." I asked the question, "How many of you are using DR?" Many. How many of you are using SRM? About half. Mm -hmm. How many of you are doing it manually? About half. And then I asked them, "Like, have you ever seen any customer that actually maintains the script?" And the guy goes, "Yes, I have." I go, oh great, what's the story? And he goes, well, I deployed it, we spent a year writing the scripts, and when I left it was working great. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so do you think if you went back now that they've named their VMs all according to the conventions the script works? <laughs> or that maybe they are, you know, created some VMs, what about new DRS pools? I mean, it's, it's it falls in that category of don't, it's very useful to come to a place like VMworld and use the blogosphere to find out about all the things that are possible. But when you're building something that's really important to you, sometimes it's wise to stay in bounds. <laughs> okay, word to the wise yeah. from Chad Sackett from EMC. For what it's worth. Thank you and, and it's been Chad, great to thanks, be here. Thanks for coming by. It's my pleasure.